in the National Gallery in Washington, D.C., and we're looking at a Jacques-Louis David Emperor Napoleon in his study at the Tuileries. This is what people think of when they have an image of Napoleon. This they is the archetypal about, This Napoleon. is, yeah, this is it. And yeah. he's in control of most of continental Europe. Yeah, he's France has extended its power. To its the boundaries. Austrian Empire, Italy, right. uh, much of the Mediterranean, the Low Countries, all his. Of course, this is before his defeat to the English. But it is after the French Revolution and uh, the beheading of King Louis the Sixteenth, which the artist actually voted for. David actually was a Jacobin. The beheading of the king, right? But then Napoleon comes along, and David becomes the painter to Napoleon. To his court, in a sense, Napoleon as emperor, he's become a new king. He has in so many ways, and so the, the but not quite, right? Because one of the things about this portrait is that it shows Napoleon hard at work as a military general and but also hero as a, and leader. As a civic leader. Exactly. Yes. He's working on his code of laws, which we can see over on the right, on the table. And so Napoleon, yes, he's a despot, he's a ruler of France, but he's perhaps in David's mind. Maybe not quite as bad. As, Certainly he was worshipped by, by the, the French. King. David would owe a great allegiance to Napoleon, who will take him out of prison, you know, <laughs> where he had been. And interestingly enough, David had actually been in prison in the Tuileries, which was to become Napoleon's palace. Probably Napoleon never sat for this portrait in the way that we imagine people sitting for portraits. No. He was a busy man, obviously. Yes, and this would have been done from memory, man. from sketches and from other portraits. Right, Absolutely. and he's obviously very idealized. He probably didn't look quite as youthful and as handsome as this in reality. Nor necessarily so in control. He's There's, in command. There here. is a real sense of his power in yes. the world. But also a sense of his, in a way not unlike Marat that David painted for the revolution, showing a man who's laboring for the state, for the good of the French people. I mean, this is a piece of propaganda. It is no question. Right? And differentiating himself from the monarchy, which had been so discredited. Right. I think that that's absolutely yeah. right. So we've got the candles, which is burned oh, down. Yes. Um, um, so we have a sense of him working through the night. It looks like it's 4 a.m. Got the code of laws that he's been working on. We have a sense of all of his various responsibilities and his dedication to the state. And so there's a sense of real reassurance. I think this is true propaganda of the state, but that was David's brilliance, wasn't yes. it? Yes. David is coming out of the neoclassical tradition, which he largely constructed. Mm -hmm. And those techniques and those traditions are still present here. Yeah. Although a there's sense of clarity. Yes, and a kind of raking light. But there's also a kind of, I don't want to say romanticism, but a kind of softening and a kind of idealizing that is distinct from David's earlier work and I think points towards the, the development of the academy in the 19th century. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, after the fall of Napoleon, David's going to be exiled, exiled and die in, in Brussels. It's a fantastic moment in history. It is. In so many ways. An iconic image.